You're probably wondering how we're going to work in infinite dimensional spaces when we don't even know what those spaces are, right? How are we even going to make predictions using those spaces with our kernels? Okay, well, as it turns out, it all works out nice and cleanly, and you never have to know what, those, what the feature space is. You just need to know how to compute inner products in it, which is what the kernels give you. Okay, so I want you to think about um, like going from um, finite spaces to infinite spaces this is kind of a continuum. So let me explain that. And by the way, when I talk about infinite dimensional spaces, I'm talking about functions. I'm talking about spaces of functions. All right, so let's start modest. Let's start in three dimensions. And we'll start with a vector. I just chose it as one, five, three. Now I'm gonna plot this vector as a bar plot. Um, and then I wanna, th I wanna think about stepping back from the plot, okay? And looking at it from a distance. And what I see is that these values are closer together. And then if I step back even further, I can think about the values as being even much closer together. And then if I think about, instead of being in three dimensions, what if I'm in a whole lot of dimensions? And then I have a whole lot of these bars that are very close together. And then if I step even further back, what I might sort of see, if I'm lucky, is a function, okay? So it's like this nice continuum between working in sort of finite dimensional vector spaces to sort of countably infinite dimensional vector spaces to working in function spaces, which are, you can think of as infinite dimensional uh, vector spaces. Okay, great. So now the second thing I wanna uh, tell you about is that if the feature, even if the feature space is infinite dimensional, even if we are working with functions, the solution to the support vector machine optimization problem is really still easy to work with. Okay, so let's take a look at that. Uh, so again, this is the SVM dual problem. And then even, even if you replace the uh, dot products between the X's with the kernel, then um, you still have the same solution. I mean, the solution is still uh, the alpha i stars, and there is still n of them, where n is the number of data points. Okay, so you can, so no matter what kernel you put in there, so even if you're working in infinite dimensional spaces, you just put the kernel in, put the kernel values in, and then the alpha i's come out, and there are still n of them. Okay, so we have those alpha i stars, and so then the question is, how can I then use the alpha i stars to make predictions uh, f of x for a test sample, new test sample x. Okay, because <laughs> you know, I can't take x and map it to this feature space. I don't even know what the feature space is. All right, so what that means is that everything has to be done through the kernels. Okay, so here's how we're gonna do it. We'll solve the dual problem. We'll get the alpha i stars. And now if we were not using a kernel, so if we're just using inner products as our kernel in our original space, then I would normally go get the primal solution as we discussed before, right? We would get lambda star and lambda zero star, which we derived earlier. Um, lambda zero star, obviously you get it from a positive support vector, which here I've called ISV. Okay, so you would get those and then you would make predictions this way, all right? Um, and that's, you know, based on the way we define to, uh, support vector machines. But when we're working actually in, um, with the kernels, we're actually not going to want to work with the lambdas. We're going to want to work with the alphas. So I want to change back from the lambdas to the alphas so that I can start using my kernels. Okay, so all I did here was just substitute in the definition of lambda j star from up, up higher up in the slide. Okay. So now when I do that, I'm gonna take that sum over j and I'm gonna pull it through. And so that, uh, you know, x stuff is going to be uh, turned into a dot product, okay? So if we're using kernels, we're gonna do this instead. And then um, that there's my dot product between xi and my x nu. Now, if I'm using kernels, I'm gonna replace the dot product with the kernel. Good. I'm almost there. <laughs> Great. So this is like, you know, one of the key equations I need. Um, I'm missing just one thing. I haven't told you what lambda zero star is yet, so let's do that. But in, in any case, we've got most of it already. So let's put that together here. I'm just going to put that together and then we'll worry about lambda zero star. Okay, so lambda zero star, um, I just got this from sort of up above. I just copied it. Um, and then I'm going to write down lambda star again in terms of the alpha i stars. 
which again, I, I just copied from above on the upper left. And then um, again, I all of a sudden I'm working with inner products. This is good. <laughs> okay, so now I can just, um, you know, instead of using the inner product, I can simply use the kernel. And then I am all set. I have everything in terms of my kernels. And so with these two equations, you now can make predictions in these high, high dimensional, infinite dimensional feature spaces without ever knowing what the feature map actually is. Thanks.